Hi guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. Breeding boas and other reptiles in captivity is one of the most rewarding aspects of the hobby. However, it's definitely not for everyone. Today I want to go over a few considerations you should think about before getting involved in a boa breeding project. In addition, I'm going to discuss a few aspects that you can consider to potentially make your breeding efforts more productive. The first thing to ask yourself before starting a reptile breeding project is should you be breeding reptiles? And so there's this push in the reptile hobby to become a breeder. And it's almost as though if people don't become breeders, they haven't succeeded or they haven't reached the highest level of herpeticulture. And this is really misguided. And I think where this comes from is that several decades ago, there was a lot less captive breeding of reptiles and a lot more of them were being taken from the wild. So there was this push to conserve reptiles by focusing on captive breeding. And back then, many species hadn't been bred yet in captivity and the science of how to breed them hadn't been figured out. But you know, today, many of these species are almost a recipe to breed. You just basically follow a procedure that's been worked out very well by someone else and you can breed the reptile. And that's less so for boas than it is for some other species like ball pythons and corn snakes. So there's really no need for people to breed reptiles anymore because there are plenty of them being bred in captivity. And these species are not being removed from the wild nearly as much. In some cases, they're not being taken from the wild at all. But there's no threat to the wild populations posed by the reptile hobby so there's really not the need to breed reptiles. There's also a far greater supply of reptiles available in captivity. And you could even argue that in some cases, breeding them is akin to like a puppy mill where people are generating animals that are gonna be excessive as far as the, the demand. And these animals are likely to end up being homeless. So you know they're really not doing a very good thing by breeding these animals. It's also perfectly okay to be a reptile collector rather than a reptile breeder. So most breeders are gonna focus on just one species or at most a couple species of reptile and get large groups of them to breed. Whereas a collector can collect lots of different species across different groups, snakes, lizards, tortoises, amphibians, maybe even some invertebrates in there. Uh, and you can have a far more diverse collection of animals if you don't focus on the breeding. Of course, some people do a little bit of each. They have a diversity of animals and they have some smaller breeding groups. But in general, um, most breeders are gonna focus and specialize on just one group of animals. But if you want to be more of a collector and just enjoy lots of different types of animals, uh, there's no need for breeding and you might be better off just focusing on collecting and maintaining different types of animals or reptiles in captivity. And the last thing to consider about whether you should breed reptiles is why you made this decision. And a lot of people see these pictures of these beautiful litters of baby boas and they're all real nice and healthy and it's just so exciting. And you know, having one of these litters of baby boas is truly a great feeling for the breeder. But people get kind of addicted to that and they don't really uh, realize all of the hard work that it takes to get to that point. So when you see a litter of baby boas, this is the end result of many years of preparation and hard work. And really the day-to-day -day operations of a reptile breeder are mostly just cleaning cages, just doing the mundane tasks of cleaning cages and feeding animals and, you know, doing that kind of stuff. And the moments that you see represented in those pictures of the, of the beautiful litters, this is a very small percentage of the time. And this is really the culmination of many years of hard work. So if you've decided that you wanna go into breeding reptiles, you really have to carefully examine your situation to see if you have the patience and persistence that it's gonna take. Because in general, most boa breeding projects are a five-year project, and this is from getting the healthy baby boas that you're gonna raise for your breeding stock, to getting an animal to breeding size, to pairing them and getting successful litters. A lot of people think, well, I'll just go and buy some already grown offspring or already grown boas, 
and then I'll get a head start to producing my own offspring. And this is possible in some cases, but it's very hard to find uh, adult breeding animals in boas. The vast majority of animals available are babies. And it's not really realistic to think that someone is going to raise, put in the time to raising some animals only to sell them as adults. So sometimes you can find some adult animals that someone is in a situation and they have to uh, get out of breeding really quickly and those will become available. But often if you can find adult animals, there might be some health issues with them or they may have already failed a breeding trial at in, with another person. So in general, getting baby animals and raising your own is the best way to have success in breeding. These are animals that are gonna be in your facility for in some cases four or five years. And so they'll have experienced the precise environment in your breeding facility. Um, and it's more likely you're gonna be successful that way. And so during the time it takes to get animals ready for breeding, you're gonna really have to focus on the animals. And depending on the size of your collection, this may make it such that the rest of your life has to change. For example, if you work a job where you have to travel a lot and be away from the animals, that's going to potentially be a problem. Or if you're used to taking lots of trips on vacation and you know traveling a lot, that might be a problem. So if you're lucky enough to have a family member or a business partner or some friend that can go into business with you and also watch the reptiles, sometimes you can work out a situation where one of you goes away. But for most of us, we don't have that. So we have to, we're forced to choose between our reptiles and going away. Um, I take very few trips, to be honest. I used to travel quite a bit more just for my own recreation, as far as doing like outdoor stuff and camping and that kind of stuff. But since I really got into the reptiles, I almost never go away. Um, you know, I can't be away when my reptiles potentially need care or you know during the summer when you have the potential birthing season it's really hard to take any trips so as a result i haven't gone away for more than a few days for probably the last you know 10 years or so um, which is one of the things you have to be prepared for if you want to go into breeding reptiles so if you do decide to go into breeding you have to carefully choose what type of boa or reptile you're going to work with. And in general, it is a plus to specialize and to just focus as specifically as possible on a small group of reptiles or boas and to really specialize in that particular uh, taxon. I mean, nobody can breed all the different boas. There's just too many. And even if you focus on, you know, specifically the locality boas, you may want to specialize, for example, just in dwarf lo island locality boas, or you may want to focus on different types of true red tail boa or something like that. But it is really a plus, at least at first, to specialize in a specific group of boas and to build up as, as uh, good of a breeding group as possible for that one specific type of boa. And then you can uh, get experience in that particular area and hopefully get a reputation in the boa community for specializing in that area. And that's kind of what you're known for. But once you establish some experience in a specific area, then you can venture out and, you know, to other areas. When you pick the specific area you're going to work with, you have to ask yourself about the demand for this particular type of boa. So, Hopefully you're going to be breeding a boa that there's a commercial demand for and that people want so you're not going to end up with a lot of homeless boas. If you happen to like a particular type of boa that there's no commercial demand for, you really have to think about breeding it. I mean, does it make sense to breed it at all? Because you might well be stuck with lots of baby boas that you're not going to be able to find homes for. So unless you're okay with keeping every single baby boa you produce, uh, you know, I wouldn't recommend breeding that specific type of boa. Uh, obviously you should love the boas that you're producing, so don't just breed a boa because there's a commercial demand for it. But look for a type of boa 
that there's both a commercial demand for and that you love and that if you don't sell them the babies for several years that's fine you ultimately want something that you're going to be completely happy with keeping all the babies for yourself another thing to consider is that there are quite a few other skills required for successful boa breeding in addition to just producing the baby boas and i did a video recently entitled essential skills for boa breeders that you may want to check out but a couple things that are important to work on include marketing and your photography skills. And as far as the marketing, you want to actively market before you have the babies. So you want to be on the social media and the different boa groups. You want to put pictures of your boas on a regular basis, just so other hobbyists out there know that you have these boas and you're getting together this great group of a specific type of boa and you're planning on breeding them eventually maybe two or three years down the line and then people will know that you're working on this and they may even contact you ahead of time to get on your waiting list but it's always great to market your baby boas before they're even available that way uh, you'll know what the market is and that when they're ready to go you'll already have people that are interested in giving homes for them photography is another essential skill and I'm planning on releasing some videos in the near future about taking photographs of boas. But I'll just say this may well be the most important skill a boa breeder has other than actually breeding the boas. It's, if you can't have great quality pictures of your boas that really show how great they are, you're really doing them a disservice and you're, you're selling them short. And in general, having great pictures of media you know medium quality average quality boas that's going to be easier to sell than a lousy picture of a world-class quality boa people just want to see nice quality pictures that are representative and that really show off your boa uh, to its fullest so the last thing that i want to say is that persistence is really critical for breeding boas there it's not a short-term project i mean five years is a pretty large chunk of time for anyone so you really need to stick with it you need to not let the failures get you down and there's certainly you can expect the unexpected with breeding boas boa breeding in general isn't as cookbook as some of the other types of reptiles you know you can follow a specific recipe that's worked for someone else and it might just not work for you for whatever reason You'll notice that most of the large commercial reptile breeding facilities, they don't work with boas. They work with things like ball pythons and corn snakes because it's a lot easier to replicate. You know, you can basically do the same thing and the snakes will breed under basically the same conditions in a completely separate type of facility. Whereas with boas, especially the true red tails, it's not like that. And if there's a lot more of an art to it. You know, what worked for your buddy in Florida might not work for you, even if you try to replicate their, the conditions as closely as possible. In addition, the animals, it's a lot, it can be harder to find compatible pairs and everything might be great, but the two snakes you have together just don't like each other for whatever reason and they don't produce babies. So there's a lot more persistence that's necessary. And I've had several times where a pairing didn't work out the first year that I paired up the pair, but then I pair them the following year and I have a successful litter. And so the persistence coupled with the hard work because the majority of what you're going to be doing isn't the exciting, glamorous, you know, this is my beautiful baby, my beautiful litter of baby boa stuff. Um, it's more like, you know, I'm cleaning cages and I'm, you know, scooping the poop of my boas and things like that. Um, but you really have to stick with this year after year to have any chances of success. And I think a lot of people that get into boas, the first year they're in the honeymoon phase and they're loving their baby boa and thinking of all the great things that are going to happen. And then they get some more. And then a few years later, they have a pretty good breeding group and they have some projects they're going to work on. But then like years four and five, they're starting to, to get tired of all of the constant cage cleaning and, you know, the sacrifices they're making in other parts of their life. And then they finally get their breeding project and 
you know, maybe one of the pairings goes well, another one doesn't go so well, and it's really starting to take its toll. But I've seen a lot of people, they get into breeding boas and, or any reptile really, and, you know, after a few years, they just give up because it's, it can be draining. So, you know, persistence is key. You really can't give up. You know, and you can expect that there's going to be some unexpected things that are going to happen and that you're going to have to deal with. So I made this video to hopefully give you guys some secrets and some tips and things like that. But really, there's no secret to breeding boas. I mean, people these days want a shortcut. They want their secret to, you know, doing anything fast and doing anything successful. Unfortunately, that's, there's really nothing like that for boas. It comes down to persistence, hard work and you know patience um, I hope this video was helpful I know it was a little less structured than some of my other videos but hopefully at least a few of the things I said may have had some value to you but I thought I would finish the video by showing you one of my holdbacks this is a 2015 male Pacapa Peruvian boa um, beautiful animal you can see beautiful gold and yellow color this guy's got really thin saddles one of the reasons I held him back and I know a lot of people like the thin saddles in the Peruvians I actually prefer slightly larger saddles but this guy was just so beautiful but by, uh, by his background colors you know and I thought this one was a female when I held him back I thought you know she was a female she turned out to be a male, you know, which is perfectly okay. Um, just a gorgeous animal. And this guy is now breeding size, and I might pair him up next year. Just have to see. But he's certainly a contender for the 2021 breeding season. Um, and hopefully I'll have some Pacapo Peruvians next year, if not this year. Anyway, I uh, hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.